Jason and I had taken a trip all the way from Birmingham, Alabama to Kansas City, Missouri to see the Buffalo Bills take on the Kansas City Chiefs. And while we were there, we thought we'd take in the Arabia Steamboat Museum. Now, I first saw the documentary on the Arabia on YouTube about two years ago and thought if I'm ever in the area, it'd be a fantastic outing. Uh, and I will tell you, it did not disappoint. As you enter the back entrance of the museum here, uh, you walk right into the giant paddle wheel. This is one of the paddle wheels that was preserved from the uh, recovery. Now this paddle wheel is massive. Uh, it really doesn't do it justice in the video of how big this is. And uh, it gives you an idea of really how big the Arabia Steamboat, Steamboat was. Uh, and so again, this is just on display. They've got a functional paddle wheel uh, recovered from the wreckage. As you enter the museum, the first thing you're going to see is they've got uh, TVs that will tell you the story of the Arabia Steamboat Museum. Now, we sat and we, I think it's very important to go through each of these, but it tells you a little bit of the history there. And uh, also uh, has things on display. This is from a different ship. This is actually an older ship uh, when you walk in. But as you as you walk in, you can see again, it's, uh, there are TVs that tell you the story. It's discovered in a cornfield and how it was discovered. I felt like this was very informative. This is actually a piece of the wreckage that was recovered and uh, just gives you an idea of the size. And so we just kind of check this out again. This is just as you enter the museum. And this is kind of an aerial view just to give you an idea of uh, what that looks like. I also included a couple of steel pictures. Now these are the boilers. This is how the steamboat was uh, discovered and they tell you about this all throughout some of the videos there. This entire platform is the length of the steamboat and as you enter they've got these artifacts on display plus some storyboards to tell you a little bit more about it. So while there are articles within the glass display <clears throat> Uh, there's a lot of stuff as you continue to go through the museum, and I'm going to show you that. Probably uh, this gun was one of the more fascinating things I, I thought. Uh, everything from beads to guns to knives, and the collection itself is just massive. And so, uh, again, these are just some of the displays that they are going to show you. And as you go through and enter the museum, displays are located along what would be the deck, basically. Uh, the museum in the bottom is actually part of, uh, or dimension-wise, the length of the ship. And they have each of these displays set up to tell you a little bit about the articles that they have discovered. The way these are displayed was just really fascinating to me. Uh, it really told a story. It gave you a sense of kind of being there, being on the ship uh, with some of the surroundings. You can see at the bottom there, those are the gunpowder canisters, or a few of them. everything from beads to jewelry. Now here coming up is the stump that actually sank the Arabia. Make sure you'll notice a cameo appearance in the upper left corner. That's Mr. David Halley. He's responsible for actually kind of getting things going with the uh, Steamboat Museum. Now I like the story of the mule in the museum. There's one casualty, it was this mule and uh, that was an interesting exhibit there that they had set up. You have everything from figurines to knives <clears throat> to guns. Again, I showed those earlier, but also this is the preservation area. And so you're able to go through and kind of see uh, some of the uh, people at work working to preserve items. Interesting enough, I think it's uh, four months to preserve one shoe. These are some of the things that are down in their uh, exhibit in front of where they are working. As you continue, uh, they display the beautiful glassware that uh, that was on the ship. these items are displayed is just fascinating to me. They really do a great job displaying them. You can see right here how how big and how massive the exhibit is. And uh, in the bottom there, those are keys, skeleton keys, 
um, and all of the hardware. And so this is just kind of a snapshot of what that room looks like. There are doorknobs, again, keys, and uh, all the things that you would need from a hardware perspective. As we continue to go around, you'll see that there were things like saw blades. Uh, there were stone wheels, I'm assuming for uh, crushing grain and corn. And <clears throat> right to the right there, you're gonna see uh, some of the clothing exhibit that's gonna begin to uh, reveal some great treasures there also. Interesting enough, uh, this is again snapshots of, of the exhibits themselves. I thought the coat and hat was really, really neat, but the shoes were amazing. They have 4,000 shoes in this exhibit, and all these, again, four months to preserve one shoe. Uh, That's pretty fascinating, but there are so many different kinds of shoes. And here's kind of a, an overall exhibit showing you how many shoes were, were on the boat. They had everything from little tiny boots to dressy shoes to you name it. And so my son found the uh, little kid boots very interesting. And this is just amazing. The volume of shoes was just absolutely amazing. And these are uh, a couple of items too uh, for horses, some bridles. We were, needless to say, taken back by the shoe collection. This was really neat. We got to meet Matt Hawley, who is the grandson, and his dad was uh, David, the gentleman in the picture previously. But I got to pick his brain about other uh, experience with the Steamboat Arabia. He really added our experience by sharing some of the things, such as playing King of the Mountain back when they were digging the boat up. Now, <clears throat> these are some buttons pants he did tell us that some of the threads had rotted out the, while the materials were still good some of the pants the threads had rotted out and so uh some of them are just displayed in a certain way because of that but the number of buttons and we've got thimbles here uh is just amazing to go back in time and go you know what these are from 150 years ago or now 170 years ago uh, you know, back in 1856. It's really fascinating. Again, here's some of the glassware on display. It's amazing this, uh, of course, isn't broken or anything like that. This next part of the exhibit is one of the more fascinating ones to me. Uh, this is some of the food that was preserved, and it really looks like you could open up a jar and eat the items inside. <clears throat> and uh, I did ask Matt, uh, if anyone had done that, and he did say he had an uncle that got into him and tried a couple of things. As you round the corner, there's a tool exhibit, and these were a lot of the tools that they would have used back then. Fascinating. Imagine Imagine how devastating it was for axes, those at that time. Uh, but I can't maybe imagine not be how able, devastating uh, let's say there's it was for people at that time to lose. The steamboat uh, you know, let's say these items weren't supplied in the store any longer because the steamboat sank. These are files uh, that, that were on display. Again, here's some more guns and boots. Just the volume was fascinating. As we come over here, you're gonna see, this is probably one of my more, one of my favorite pieces, the pocket knives. And so uh, there were just all kinds of pocket knives. Those were a couple of snapshots just to give you an idea. These were the gunpowder canisters, a couple of them. These weren't in the best conditions. The better ones are in uh, glass cases, but you can eat, see everything from the keys there. And they had everything labeled, which was really helpful if you didn't know something, what something was, there was a label there so that you could uh, be informed. This was really neat. If you want to think about this, uh, these, well, let's uh, show you the cigars. This was chewing tobacco that was recovered as well. But right here we've got clay pipe. So uh, back when they smoked the pipe, that's what they used. And to the left there were the stems. Those little round things right there were boxes of uh, matches. And uh, I really didn't have any idea they had matches back then. So that was pretty fascinating. On the back wall there, all the cookware. 
uh, that they would have used and, and as well as candles uh, plenty of boxes of candles now these are pumpkin seeds apricot seeds look like pepper uh, various articles there in this display and again it was just fascinating uh, you can see there we've got ink pens uh, with ink wells there's some ink wells on display as well this is some of the food that was preserved and so you can see here there are little cans of oysters my son joked and said I should eat one one I told him I couldn't but number two I don't think I would be trying those out the top shelf there those are the pickles and as we leave that area we get to see all the plateware okay, dinnerware and again it's just amazing all this covered and not broken. Now these plates were just fascinating right here. Uh, the detail on them was second to none and uh, just really, you know, for that time to, to have items like that preserved again is, is something that you wouldn't think would take place on excavation. So all of the items in the museum are uh, genuine, everything from the candles that they have. And again, you can see some cookware back here. Everything from spoons to knives. This is some of the jewelry that was recovered. And uh, again, some glassware, but you can see I'm going to take you through and show you a little bit of this. There's also some perfume, but these earrings are fascinating. I zoomed in and took a close up to give you an idea, and basically the detail on these earrings is pretty fascinating. You can only imagine uh, bringing those home to someone as a gift back in the Now what's interesting is they've actually recreated the smell that 